Hi, I'm back in the workshop. Got a problem with the mini digger. So um, if you've been following our garage workshop series, we've been building the garage workshop and we've been using the uh, mini digger quite a lot, especially recently with the gravel and uh, offloading the gravel uh, from the trailer and then taking it down and then basically uh, putting it over the wall, doing a lot of um, lifting, turning and moving and dropping. And uh, just this last week, I noticed lots of uh, oil all over the tracks and lots of oil over my brand new concrete slab. So I did a quick check underneath and it looked like I'd ripped one of the pipes um, from the bottom because uh, I've been on a lot of uh, 2040 gravel, which is pretty harsh gravel. And um, I got stuck in it a few times with the gravel in the tracks. Anyhow, when I get it back, I spent a lot of time looking for the leak. I've cleaned it so many times and uh, I managed to get Julie to give me a hand yesterday and we took it across the driveway and uh, moving it using the up and down bucket, left and right, couldn't find anything. And then as soon as I released the blade, so pulling the blade up, huge squirt came out of one of the pipes. And uh, I'll show you now, but uh, basically uh, two of the pipes in the center have just been rubbing against each other. So every time I've turned and moved that, uh, released the blade, it's moved and it's rubbed, rubbed and rubbed. One of the smaller pipes has basically just ruptured and the other larger pipe that it's rubbing against is very, very, well, I, I'd say it's thin. So um, plan is, get those made up and replace them. But um, it's a good opportunity to show you around the Mini Digger stripped bare. I didn't film stripping it, but I will um, take you through putting it all back together. Um, it's a very, very easy machine to work on. Uh, it's just a couple of bolts will take off the sides. A few more bolts will take off the big heavy weight, which was a bit of a shock when I first moved the bucket forward without that counterweight. I nearly lost the whole thing dropping forward. But... Um, yeah, so this is uh, repairing two hydraulic lines on a Chinese mini digger, and I'll take you through it. So here is the actual culprit. This little pipe here, you can see that it's uh, serrated. And once I take these pipes off, you'll be able to see it a bit better. And this larger pipe here, um, it hasn't ruptured, but I can feel a groove just here and uh, I can feel the actual metal. Every time I rotate, this has been sliding up and down like this. So um, you could say it's not a very good design and uh, a lot of people will say, oh, that's Chinese junk for you. But uh, I've been uh, following, I always follow Al off Lumner Acres and he's just bought a uh, Bobcat tool kit or something like that. And uh, exactly the same problem. One of the uh, hydraulic pipes on his uh, Bobcat was rubbing up against the chassis and uh, ruptured. So he's just changed out his. It can happen on any machine, but uh, I will put some uh, protection on it when I put the two new pipes on. But now uh, all the sides and the backs are off and the seat and everything else. Um, I'll start off here, but you can see nice 12 volt battery just here um, with its... Uh, little on off switch it's protection switch uh, this is the fuel tank um, it's a coupe engine but uh, this is the little diesel fuel tank just here is the uh, oil cooler the hydraulic oil cooler now i bought that as an option um, it doesn't come standard on this machine but um, i thought because i live in the south of france and it's quite hot uh, i should have that that's the uh the air filter little exhaust which pokes out the back here uh, start a motor here on the little motor. Um, what else? Here's the hydraulic pump, the hydraulic tank, and that's the uh, the main motor here, of course. But uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's, it gets a bit complicated, and I'm glad I didn't have any leak down here um, on the, uh, I, I assume, the distributor for um, the, all the hydraulics. Um, that's the hydraulic motor for the turning. Uh, for the rotation of the machine. And now what I've got to do, because all the pipes come up 
into here i've got to take all this paneling off which is a bit of a pain but um that's the uh this lever here is my blade so you can see that's dropping now and that's what was squirting absolutely everywhere when the power was on So I'll do that on the other side and uh, maybe take these off and then hopefully this will just fall forward. So that's as far as I need to take it out. Um, so that's the, uh, well, I'll show you from the front there. This is my dials, all a bit dusty now because it's been used quite a bit. Um, and they're the rear of the dials. Switches, key. Uh, one switch is for the, um, the light on the front and the other switch is for the uh, extra oil cooler that I just showed you. And then here are all the uh, the controls. So uh, all the hydraulic lines come up to these. So I've got one large control line here, which is coming directly from, I think, the tank. Let me just have a quick look. So, yeah, no, sorry, the motor. So that's why uh, if that one went, that would have made a right mess. So I'm going to change this one here, which comes from the motor, and that's the larger one that is rubbing up against this one, which I assume is one of these here. So one of those. So I'll just trace that up now without the camera so I can get a good feel for it. Um, the first thing I've got to do before I remove any is drain all the hydraulic fluid. Keeping my hand here just so I can screw it back in, in case this tray isn't big enough. And I've kept the lid on. I can hear it hissing, but at least that slows down the flow. Right, I'm gonna put it back in. All right, second time. Right, that's it, I think. The actual, um, the lowest point is here with the pipe, so. But it'd be good to renew all of the hydraulic fluid. There was quite a lot of oil in that. Had to try and find a lot of empty uh, oil cans and I'll take that down to the uh, we call it the dechettery, but the local dump, and they've got a big oil tank that you fill up with it. This is the one which is an easy one. This is the main one. So I'm taking this out from the top. 22 mil, the actual uh, fitting. Uh, 
Right. All right, let's see if I can get this one out. I'm not going to bother with the string because I know where this one, this one's quite an easy one. Saying that. <laughs> there we go. Keep that upright. The straight connector off. Leave the 90 degree attached to the, uh, the pump. Oh. Try not to make too much of a mess. There we go. Pretty lucky actually because that one there is that one there. And then down below it comes straight down here onto that point there. So they're quite easy to um, get to. So I'll just whip those off now. Right, I'm just gonna tidy up all of this um, spilt oil. It's either out of the pipes I've just taken or from where it all squirted out. And then get down to the uh, distribution shop to get a couple of those pipes made up. So here's the smaller of the two pipes. Um, I've noticed they made the Continental pipe. So Continental is a, is a French company. They make all our tires, of course. So um, here is the damage. I'll show you that a bit closer up, you can see there. So there's the actual hole right on the, uh, the crimp joint. And that's where it was rubbing up and down, up and down. And here is the other pipe. And that's the matching rub, but it hadn't actually pierced through, but it wouldn't have been long. So those two there were basically going constantly like that when I was turning and putting up and down the rear blade. So I do need to, to figure out how to protect those when I put the new ones in. But um, yeah, this one's Continental as well. So uh, hopefully they're pretty standard pipes because that was one of the big questions I always had was, where are you going to get parts when it all dis you know breaks and everything else? Oh, it's going to be a disaster. But uh, yeah, it's all pretty standard stuff. Um, back at our local farm supply shop where Ian over a week ago Bought the two broken hydraulic pipes. Yes, I've got them. He's been waiting patiently for these. So I've got his two new hydraulic pipes that he needs to finish the repair job on the mini excavator. So let's get back home, get these sorted, and the little digger will be back on site. So I've got my new cables, my new hydraulic lines. Um, looking at them, that's the uh, the new one. That's the, uh, the old one. I... Uh, these ones are much, much chunkier um, fittings, the, the crimps going down the other end. That's a lot chunkier. Uh, the bigger size is about the same. That's the new one, but uh, exactly the same as the, uh, the Chinese that came with the actual mini excavator. Um, but the first thing I must do because um, as you know, it failed rubbing together with the, the smaller hose of the blade onto the main hose of the actual, the output of the uh, hydraulic motor. You can see there that it's, um, that's where it's rubbed. So I need to protect that on the new one. Although I am gonna try and reroute this one slightly so uh, it isn't in the way of anything uh, turning when I do rotate the machine. So first of all, I'm just gonna get the new pipe, which is that one, put them together just so I know where it was rubbing on the new pipe, which is about there. Now I've got this sort of, a, it's a cable wrap, a plastic, hard plastic cable wrap. And what I'm gonna do now is, is just uh, put probably a couple of inches, five centimeters or so, just around this section here where the old one failed. Well, on the big one, it didn't fail but uh, it was going to very soon. So I'm gonna put this uh, protection on and uh, hopefully with a bit of rerouting and this protection, we won't get this problem again. 
this stuff I had in my uh, in my drawer, so I'm just going to use what I have. Quite excited because I got a new uh, mini dumper arrive from uh, Delix. Um, we, we just needed something a bit more powerful than a manual wheelbarrow. So uh, I'll be bringing that video out shortly. Uh, the unboxing, well unboxing, unpalleting and the putting together of that and uh, getting it up onto the plot. And that's why I've got to get this ready and working so we can actually get some sh uh, soil shifted up on the plot and get all that retaining wall, all the soil put back behind it. That's about enough, I'd say. Get my knife. Get that one through there. So that, I think I can reroute. Although it does need to go across there. I'll go around the back. Jeez. That's the reinforcement uh, plastic I put on the cable wrap. Um, that there, if you can just see the open um, hydraulic fitting down there, that's where the blade fitting will fit onto, and I'll do that next. The other one is pretty much easy to find out where the rub is. It's right on the end here where it actually connects down into the pump. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same as I did for the main output hose just going to wrap some around that as i said i'm trying to reroute it anyway so make sure none of these hoses will rub in the future right i'm doing it on the wrong pipe <laughs> need to do it on the new pipe just cut off the excess Get this one rooted in. Comes up to here. There. That's not too hard. When I took all these out, I was uh, quite surprised how easy the access was to them. So I'm gonna actually try and get it down through there first. Oh, that's not odd. Put it over the top. I've just got that one all tightened up down there. This is the uh, the main hose coming from the pump, and that one is going up to the blade control. So they're not really touching. Now I've rerouted them. Um, when I've uh, got the machine all running and I rotated a little tiny bit, I can see um, if they sort of move into position or not. So while I wait for the store to open, because this is France and they all shut for lunch, um, I am going to get on with putting back all the front, all the uh, control uh, section, the console, if you want to call it that. With the, uh, I'll put these levers on first because they have got a lock nut on them and I just need to tighten that up and I can get access although it's pretty tight I can get access here so for these levers it's pretty much the same as the um, the track levers but I've got the rubber cowling to go over so I'm just going to 
bolt him down and do the lock nut. Also, this one needs to be in the right place. Oh, the foot pedal and the blade lever. So I'm just going to put those on. Any particular way? I'm not sure. So that is the uh, the console put back, all put back together, went back perfectly. There's little uh, brass um, lugs just behind here that slot into this metal here. So when you're pulling it tight, it actually engages. Uh, levers are all on, pedals on, and it actually does uh, turn on. Right, on with filling the oil up. One little issue I did have, and it's probably my fault, I went to use the, uh, the light when I was doing all the gravel and uh, I pulled it forward with my hand and uh, it pulled these uh, wires out, this plug. I just soldered it and I'm gonna put a couple of sleeves on it and it should be fine. be good to go with the light. Woohoo! Right, back from the suppliers. Oh, that was quite expensive for that oil. I've got uh, 25 litres of Hydro Super HV and um, yeah, some just cheap stuff. 15W40 for the uh, Mini Digger. And other than Instead of using different fittings and things, I'm just gonna try a little uh, oil pump because I've got to get the oil back into the machine and that's just as difficult as getting it out. So I'm gonna try this little pump and uh, that's for the actual engine oil, not the hydraulic oil. All right, I've got it all connected up. Let's see. So I'm gonna put in a... I've got the... Graduations on here, so that's uh, five litres. So I'm going to put in two litres down to three. Let's see if it works. We were going so slow and all that air in the pipe. I just swapped a bigger pipe on the front end. So it's got equal pipe both sides, it's pumping beautifully now. Too bloody beautifully. Well that little pump worked great, but as you can see, um, yeah, overflowed a little bit. So it's 1.5 litres of 15W40 oil is a complete oil change for this machine. Oh. Now you've got to make sure the uh, the drain plug at the bottom is secure. Got to make sure this drain one is tight. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to pull that in.
Well, I'd say that was a success. Everything looks to be okay. So I'll now do a quick rebuild of all the body parts because you didn't see that at the beginning because I'd already taken them off. Right, let's get on with it. Get back together, back to the plot and get some soil moved. Thanks for watching. Um, if you like these sort of mini uh, maintenance videos, give us a thumbs up and put a comment down below. Um, we're trying to split these up between the main um, build project and all the sort of small ancillary projects. So uh, we'll see you in the next video, which might have something to do with that little machine over there. See you soon.